Hi everyone, I'm Shai. I'm a senior developer advocate at Temporal, and I have a bit of a confession. I have built the most ridiculously over-engineered chatbot that you've ever seen. I've taken a simple ask an AI a question and ended up with distributed workflows, dual AI models, fancy solar system themed animations, and enough complexity to hopefully make an enterprise architect weep with joy. And honestly, I regret nothing here. Let me explain what I've done. Most chatbots work like this. You're gonna ask it a question. It's gonna think, and then it's gonna answer. And I saw that beautiful simplicity and decided it needed more moving parts. This is the Temporal Question Planetarium. And yes, I know that that's a mouthful. It's, it's really what happens when you take an Ask an AI a Question demo and decide that that demo is just much too straightforward. This project has three major pieces. Flask with WebSockets for real-time updates, Temporal, which is our workflow orchestration tool, and then a worker. That worker is going to be running either small LM3, which is a 3 billion parameter model for fast local inference, or GPT OSS 20B, which is a 20 billion parameter model running via OLAMA for more powerful responses. And all of this is just to answer, what do we care that the apple fell on Isaac Newton's head? Quick sidebar, what does a billion parameters actually mean? Think of parameters as the neural network's memory. Each one stores a tiny piece of learned knowledge. A 3 billion parameter model has 3 billion of these little weights that learned patterns from training data. More parameters generally mean more knowledge, but also more computational power that you need to run the model. It's like the difference between a pocket calculator and a supercomputer. Both of them can do math, but like one of them's got a lot more going on under the hood. Now, why are we using Olama for the bigger model? The 20B model uses MXFP4 quantization, which requires a GPU to run efficiently, something my MacBook doesn't have. Olama gets around this by repackaging it into a CPU-friendly format, uses optimized inference engines, and then serves it to me through an API. Essentially, I've got a translator that takes this GPU-only model and makes it speak CPU fluently. Here it is in action. I've got the circular interface that's using the Orbit CSS framework. Now, I've got a model selection dropdown, and I can choose between the speedy small LM3 or the powerful 20 billion parameter model. I'm going to type in a question. Now, when I hit submit, instead of calling that AI directly, I'm using a temporal workflow to handle everything. Once submitted, the workflow is essentially guaranteed to complete. Even if I get a network outage or a service disruption, I can use the workflow's unique ID to track its progress throughout the entire lifecycle. Essentially, we've got mission control for my chatbot questions. I can see my workflow status, retry failures, and if I need to terminate something, I can do that mid-execution. Is this massive overkill? 100%. But I've achieved something beautiful. Bulletproof small talk. Now, network failures, model crashes, heck, even cosmic radiation, none of it can stop my chatbot from eventually explaining to me what gravity does to apples. It's essentially resilience engineering for my social life. Now, we've used 247 lines of code for what we probably could have done in 15, but I've disguised this monument to unnecessary complexity as a learning exercise. It's like, you know, kind of practicing brain surgery, but on a grape. But I'm really into this model and this architecture. So, you know, we've done this decoupling. Uh, our web interface doesn't know about the AI model. The AI model doesn't know anything about our web interface. It doesn't matter whether I'm using the local 3B model or the beefy 20B model through Olama. They're all connected by Temporal and Temporal is kind of managing and handling everything. I really like this circular interface. It, it makes it feel like when I'm submitting a question, like I'm performing some sort of mystical ritual. You know, each question becomes a planet in the solar system, multiple questions process in parallel, some using the fast local model, others using the powerful model. Each of them have their own workflow that we can click into and see what's going on under the hood. We've got three separate processes coordinating on my laptop. It's a, it's a mini distributed system that I'm using to learn about distributed systems. And here's where my architecture really pays off. Adding OpenAI to this project took me about an hour because the workflow layer abstracted away all of the model-specific details, which honestly is kind of necessary because the AI field moves so fast that I'm essentially guaranteed that some shiny new model is going to drop between me writing this script and you watching it. My architecture doesn't care though. It just orchestrates requests regardless of what's running the thinking. Look, is this the most practical way to build a chatbot? No, definitely not. Probably not. Not at all. But as a learning exercise in distributed systems, workflow orchestration, and production-ready architecture, it's, it's great. I'm really happy with it.
And you know what? The really embarrassing thing here is that it works really well. All of this ridiculous over-engineering does provide a lot of real benefits. It's reliable. It handles failure gracefully. It scales beautifully. It's kind of infuriating because I have all of this error handling, but it runs so well, I'm probably never going to see it in this toy application. If you want to try this for yourself, I put everything on GitHub. The links are in the description. You'll need Python, the temporal CLI, uh, optionally Olama if you want to use 20B. There's probably a bit of patience required for model downloads, uh, less with small, more with <laughs> with the uh, OpenAI version the first time. But once things are running, everything's like really satisfying to watch. Your questions kind of go through this whole elaborate system. Now, sometimes the best way to learn about enterprise grade tools is to use them for something completely unnecessary. We're doing educational overkill and I'm here for it. Thanks for watching. If you built something cool with Temporal or if you've got any ideas for any other needlessly complex projects, let me know in the comments.